Hello and welcome to this video and I'm here with my mate Steve. Nice to see you. Hello, you know, uh, we're pretending to meet each other. For the first time. <laughs> we've just shot a video on Gentle Giant, but we're pretending that we've just. So <laughs> we've seen. Days gone by. I've gone and come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, on this video, we're going to be looking at the progressive rock band Focus and trying to work out what which is our favourite album, which we think the best album is for um, people who don't know Focus who've come to this video to find out which album shall I get for, for first. Hopefully, we can help you with that. And for Focus aficionados, we'll also be able to. You know, show you some albums maybe you haven't got and get into the depths. So, Focus, right? I haven't covered them on this channel. I've been wanting to for ages. Um, my Focus knowledge is not that good. Mm. So I've had to pull in Steve. Now, Steve, also known as the Progmeister, is my go-to for all prog knowledge. Steve has got his own radio show where he plays all the modern prog and all the old prog. And he also has got his own YouTube, and I'll put the link into that below. And he also runs the best progressive rock festival in the UK, Fusion Fest. You know, who have got you on? It's on in a few weeks. Five weeks. It? Five weeks time. And who have you got on? Oh, who haven't? Uh, IQ, Solstice, Mick Pointer Script. They're doing the whole of uh, Script for a Justice Tier plus Grendel and B sides, and it's uh, Mick Pointer, obviously. Nick Barrett from Pendragon, uh, Ian Salmon who used to play bass for Arena, um, Mike Varty who plays keyboards for Landmark and uh, I'm trying to think, is it Cummings, Brian Cummings, the, the lead vocalist who's a dead ringer for Fish. So uh, if you're a big Marillion fan, just coming on the Sunday is going to be an absolutely incredible experience because it's the only UK performance. The only other one they're doing is in the Border Eye and yeah. uh, that's on the... 11th of March because on the 13th of March is the 40th anniversary of Script for a Justice Tear. <coughs> but then we've got Veriditas, Cairo, Cyan, Sprig and Mist, The Emerald Dawn, The Wood Demons, incredible lineup. Check it out on fusionprogfestivals.com. So this guy, he knows his prog. He knows his <coughs> focus, right? <laughs> um, we hope. <laughs> and uh, that festival, a few years ago, a few years ago, you had Focus Headline. We did, we did, festival. yeah. 2019, uh, it was absolutely incredible coup. We got Focus playing in Stairport on 7. Yeah. And uh, they just totally blew the roof off. They were amazing. Were you there? Were you yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this is, this. I mean, so for me, Focus are one of the classic progressive rock bands. Not only that, they're one of those rare progressive rock bands that have had a hit record, which everybody knows. Everybody yeah. knows Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Um, a huge career, more albums than we can get our head round today because they're still going and they've been making albums yep. for a long yep. time. Yep. Um, the other th other thing about Focus is, as, as much as Focus is a prog band, they're also like a jazz fusion band well, as well. Well, Toys Van Leer actually doesn't class themselves as prog. He doesn't class them as, themselves as prog. He's actually gone on record as saying they're not a prog band. Ironically, they are a problem. <coughs> <laughs> you can't get more proggy than Focus. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, so where do we start with this band? How would you describe them? Focus. Well, they are predominantly instrumental. Obviously, they mm. throw in the odd vocal track. Yeah. Uh, if you class yodeling as vocals, <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, I think like Gentle Giant, they're sort of on the extremes of prog because again they've got their own sound mm. predominantly instrumental so they don't have to rely on a vocalist incredibly versatile musicians i'd say jazz orientated mm. yeah. predominantly uh, but obviously when jan ackerman was with the band there was that sort of uh, rock element brought in and uh, now he got uh, meno Gutierrez who's took over from jan ackerman um it's I'd say jazz orientated with yeah. a bit of blues thrown in as well. Uh, obviously, if you look at the long form stuff, unlike Gentle Giant, they have got an epic. In mm. fact, they've got two. They've got uh, Eruption, and then they've got um, the one on Hamburger Concerto. You know, so <clears throat> you know, unlike Gentle Giant, they are familiar with long epic tracks. You know, and then with this family, uh, it, you've got that yodeling, which is a a, a definite characteristic of the band yeah, yeah. is incredible keyboard playing, but also <coughs> the flute playing. Yeah, and yeah. I always felt that you know there was the two great flute prog bands. You've got Jethro Tull, yeah. and you've got um, uh, Focus, 
Um, and some really strong instrumental hits, which have gone on to become themes to TV shows. So yeah. growing up, um, I'd heard Focus as a, as a small child because yeah. um, on the first album, there's an instrumental that was in the TV show. Is it House of the King? Yeah, House of the King. Yeah. And I can remember there's a TV show, and I'm not going to be able to recall it right now, but I'll... I'll it is it. very Jethro Tull. It? It's, it's uh, that's my favourite focus tune. Yeah. Is, I think that's a just yeah. incredible... It sounds really like a Jethro melody. Tull track. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So I think because there's so many albums, what, what shall we just go through what you've <coughs> got here? And, yeah, and, uh, uh, obviously the first album was In and Out of Focus. Um, which is again like Gentle Giant, they were finding their feet. Is that but, about 69, isn't it? 69, yeah, 70. but then obviously the second album is just an absolute classic, and obviously for that we're talking. Moving Waves. Moving Waves. Now, is this called Focus 2 or Moving Waves? It's called Moving Waves. Yeah. Uh, this, this particular version of it, it, although it says Polydor, it's actually on the Blue Horizon yeah. label, which was a, an import. Um, I picked this up recently because we're just starting to rebuild our vinyl collection. I have to be honest, the quality is not brilliant. I'm looking to get a better quality copy, but I just wanted to get it on vinyl just to say I've got yeah. it. Because, jumping the gun, I have to say this is my favourite Focus album, you know, because it features Eruption. I mean, what an absolute masterpiece that is. And they still play it live today, you know. And I think I'm with you with that. I think there's a, <coughs> you, you, you've got the, the first album where it's all in embryo and they haven't quite nailed it. That's right. And then we get the second album, which I always thought was called Focus 2 and Not okay. Moving Waves. There's a track, well, there's a track called Focus, Focus 2, 2 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there's a run of albums there, which are sort of, they're vying for being the classic yeah. Focus albums. And I think that is where you'd be going to find. Well, they actually do on every album. They do a track called Focus. Yeah. So it's Focus One, Focus Two, Focus Three, and so on. And uh, there's actually a box set which came out last year called Focus Fifty. And uh, if you've not come across the band before, I definitely recommend. This is a good place to start. Uh, I haven't got. I've got it digitally, but not in a physical form. And it's a three CD set. The first CD is all the Focus tracks. You know, one, two, whatever all redone by the current lineup <clears throat> and the second and third discs are actually a live set that they did in South America mm. and again that covers Hocus Pocus, Eruption and so on. It's, it's a good place to start and yeah. obviously with the current lineup of the band as well. When I was a kid I was into Focus, I wasn't massively into them and I had some European compilation album which basically I think it was a double album which collected those those three albums, you know, Moving Waves, Hamburger Concerto, Focus Three. Mm. So I did have the best <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of the sort of classic period. <coughs> yeah, that, yeah. You know, that was that well, was. Well, it's actually it's actually Sylvia that got me into the band. I hadn't heard for Hocus Pocus at the time. Really? I heard Sylvia on the radio, and I thought, oh my god, this is amazing. And then obviously that sort of drew me into the band and got me looking at their other albums and that's when I discovered obviously Moving Waves and mm. so on because obviously at that time they'd only got three albums out. You know, so it was a lot easier to keep tabs on the band. But uh, at the time, you know, there, there was nobody else like them. Yeah. You know, a bit like Gentle Giant. Yeah. There, there was nobody else like Focus. Uh, we did go, I did go to see Curved Air at the Town Hall, and they had a support band on called Trace. Mm. And they were very Focus orientated because they came from the same part yeah. of the world. Uh, and I believe it was uh, the same drummer, actually, Pierre Van der Linden. Yeah, he's incredible. He, drummer. he was actually the drummer. We, he's still the drummer with Focus today. But uh, he was actually the drummer on the Trace album when we saw them live. As far as I'm concerned, they absolutely blew Curved Air off the face of the yeah. earth. And I went out and bought their debut album at the time. But that's another story. But uh, no, that part of the world to me, the Nordic countries, yeah. you know, like uh, Netherlands, Sweden, Holland, <coughs> the music from that part of the world is just like no other. You know, it's got to be the most prolific part of the world for prog. Yeah, and it's like when I was in IQ, when you go into Europe and you start touring, yeah. as soon as you get to Holland, you know, these huge venues, massive yeah, prog audience, border loads of young yeah. people yeah. coming to the gigs, you know, yeah. there, there's a huge, yeah. you know, love of that music. Yeah. I think there's a connection there to, to the folk music, which we have in the UK. I think the, the, the X Factor for um, prog 
fundamentally is this English sort of music. I call it the English aesthetic. Everyone who watches the channel, I always yeah, yeah, yeah. call it the English aesthetic. <coughs> and it's basically a whole bunch of English things being put into rock. It's 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 playing rock music but from an English perspective. Yeah, yeah. I I don't cover on this channel the sort of European prog that much because I'm not that knowledgeable. So things like Faust, Can, Magma, yeah. I like them. Everyone thinks I don't like them. I do like them, but for me that is completely different yeah. to prog. But focus well, it was, is like prog. They're, yeah. they're like more like the English bands because yeah. they've got their own European folk influence in there. Yeah. You, would you agree? There's yeah. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's something in it. Yeah. Well, it's like a. It, it's like twee. It's not typically UK, is it? No. no yeah. It's there's something all yeah. of uh, focus have their own <coughs> little world, which is why I wanted to do this video because I think it's so important that we talk about them. Well, like Gentle Giant, which is sort of based in, as you've said before, yeah. medieval music, English folk, which all comes into it, classical and so on. Uh, I think with Focus, they've just got that European edge, yeah. that European sound, and you can almost tell that it's not yeah. English. Yeah. You know, it's, oh, yes. You really can't put a finger on it. Um, it's just European, mm. you know. I mean, we've been to Europe on a number of occasions, and... It, the music they play in record songs, <laughs> it's like something off Eurovision Song Contest, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's cringeworthy, you know, and yet although you've got all this, what I would call Euro pop, mm. pouring out of the, the shops, you've also got this amazing following for prog over there, you know, it's just almost like two extremes really, you know, it's... it's well, I can remember being in to on tour <coughs> in Switzerland, and... Um, on the night off we got taken to this sort of bar, and they had this sort of, all the cultural that you would expect you know all the sort of slapping and the you know, yeah, and, they, yeah and, and they brought that you know those big i don't know what they call it those big tuby things John they yeah and, and they and and this girl came out and i can remember they had a bowl and they put a penny in it and they spun the penny and they got it going like this until it was making this drone and then she yodeled over the top oh, and, and and this and i think it's that world yeah that 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 focus do a sort of rock and roll version of that yeah and I think, and then the X Factor for me is Jan Ackerman, who I think oh. is just astonishing for that period of time. You know, it's you know, you could talk about the sort of classic rock guitarists, but Jan Ackerman in the early seventies is sort of untouchable, <coughs> except for people like John McLaughlin, and then later on Aldi Miola. He's, he's well, just to give you an idea, that's just a few of Jan Ackerman's solo albums. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, and I, you know, and and so we're just scratching the surface with this, but Fusion fans. I think you need to go and check out Jan Ackerman's solo albums, yeah. which are, are much more on the fusion side, yeah. uh, but also still have progressive elements yeah. in there. I've don't seen they? him several times, and I have to be honest, is I was telling Andy before we started, there's a live album he did called 10,000 Clowns on a Rainy Day, mm. and for me, it's got to be one of my favourite live albums of all yeah. time. It is absolutely superb. And he covers, obviously, focus hits like Sylvia and Hocus Pocus in his own unique it's, way. Yeah. But he's also got a lot of his own compositions on there. It's all instrumental, but uh, absolutely superb. I'd definitely, if you want to check out Jan Ackerman, I'd definitely suggest that's a good place to start. 10,000 Clowns on a Rainy Day, double CD. And for classic albums, I think Tabernacle, which is early 70s, yep. is really, <coughs> you know, um, incredible. If you like acoustic stuff, he actually bought out, I don't know if you can see that, uh, an album called Acoustic. And it's all, obviously, acoustic work. Um... Yeah, so it shows another side of him. Really, really incredible guitar player. Yeah. So we we you know we're not going to go through all the albums because there's a ton. But yeah. that after Moving Away, which is the second album, we then have Focus Three, which is a double album. And I think again, this is a, one of the greatest progressive rock albums ever made. <coughs> it vies for being yeah. their best album. I've got the signed copy by Toys Van Leer on CD. And we've also got the vinyl as well. Should I open this up because it's a gatefold, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Show them. It's got one of the longest drum solos ever recorded. <laughs> <It is. laughs> so the, does this does this travel all the way through? Yes, you see. Never, <laughs> I have never seen this because I've got to be honest. That cover put me off a little bit. Yeah. Because um, you know it's okay, but when you then see it in that. It's gone, yeah. yeah, you see the full flutes. Yeah, you there. don't get that. You in don't a, get that. And then, CD. Oh, see, vinyl's so much better than anything else. Isn't it? Look at this. Yeah, it's got all the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, in, in, incre <laughs> incredible. You know, and we've got a version of House of the King on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So there's a big epic on here, isn't it? It's anonymous. That's, that's yeah, the that's one, the one yeah. with like a three three hour drum solo on it. Yeah, and um, the anonymous actually goes over one side and half of the other side. See, I don't know yeah. this album that well. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's got um, it's obviously on the CD. It's all one, one track. track. Yeah, and we've got Sylvia on here, which is their other big hit record. Yeah. it's really bizarre with focus, and we've got this really obscure. European instrumental prog band yeah. that have had two absolutely massive hit records that most people of a certain age would just know them. My kids know Hocus Pocus, yeah. but Sylvia's also. It's going to be the only uh, hit to feature yodeling <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and whistling and, a, and drum solos, <laughs> and you know, it's just it, it's bizarre because it's so unrepresentative yeah. in a way of focus. Is it? They just it's just a, a big fat rock riff, and then yeah. them having a jam. If they play if they play it live, hocus pocus, it's not over twenty minutes. <laughs> you know, they totally go off on a tangent. I love it live. It's brilliant. But this is a great album. I mean, you know this album better than me. I don't know that album so well. So yeah. how would you describe that one in uh, comparison? Again, with I think waves? it's a natural progression uh, from uh, Moving Waves. The only long track on there, as Andy said, is Anonymous Two which is spread over you know two sides of the album and features the longest drum solo ever recorded on vinyl I think um, obviously you've got as Andy said you've got Sylvia round goes the gossip which has got a bit of vocal in it yeah you know and uh, obviously house of the king which is I mean that's Elspeth of Nottingham I think is a bit gentle gianty mm. because it's um, you know it's a classical piece you know yeah. sort of uh, medieval, you know, so again it sort of touches on. I do feel the, there's quite a link between Focus and Gentle Joint yeah. in some respect. Well, know. I've done the, I've asked you, you know, the first time I got Steve over, I yeah. said, you know, let's do Gentle Joint and Focus. Yeah. And they've been hanging over me on this channel, yeah. and, in, yeah. in, and in my mind, they're, they're linked in they a way. Are very much so. Yeah. I think if you like the one band, you'll like the other. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a natural thing, you know, progression. Yeah, yeah definitely. And so after this, if my memory serves me, right, my prog knowledge, we've got, would it be Hamburger, Hamburger Concerto, Concerto. Yeah. which is the big prog album, isn't it? Yeah, and again, I've, I've got it on CD where I couldn't find it, because <laughs> we've got that many CDs, I just could not find it. But uh, again, we had it on vinyl, when we had all our vinyl, but uh, you've got that, again, like Eruption, you've got the second side, yeah. you know, which is a masterpiece, uh, and you've got Harem Scarem, which was released as a single. I think they were hoping to recreate the success they had with... Hocus Pocus. Mm. Uh, I think it did bother the it, charts. It, yeah, it, it wasn't. But it was only like in the yeah. lower part, like 34 or something like that. Yeah. I don't think it did particularly well, but it was the one commercial track off the album. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I think, a move back towards the Moving Wave sound, mm. I think, from Focus 3. And it sort of went from Moving Wave to Focus 3 and then back to Hamburger Concerto. I think there was more of a a move back to that particular sound, you know, mm. on that particular on that on that album, yeah. Yeah, so that that I I mean I've had a discussion on the channel in the comments about focus and everyone was arguing between these three. It's definitely these are the three <coughs> great albums. I would say it? so, yeah. yeah. And and, I, and my favourite would be Moving Waves. It just has the classic yeah. focus sound. Yeah. And um, eruption is just is it, yeah. A timeless so classic. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Timeless classic, it really is. And the fact they're still doing it live you know, and doing it very, very well, you know. Now, do, after that, they bring out an album, um, and I might be skipping stuff, and I think there's a live album, but there's, um, is there one called, well, have, have you got Mother Focus? They bought out, um, hang on, where is it? That was the um, Focus at the Rainbow. Which is a classic again. Yeah. I think we put that in the classic period. That, that is a live album, and again, it's got uh, Eruption on there, and it's got... Two focus tracks, Hocus Pocus, Sylvia, and again, it's a good place to start. That would be a good place to start, isn't it, if you want to first and, album and to an check them out. an excellent live album. If you want a best of, then go for that one, which is called uh, The Best of Focus, Hocus Pocus. Sort of and it's actually got the album version of Hocus Pocus and the single version as well. You obviously, you can't get enough of Hocus Pocus with focus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then you get the odd bootleg, like that one there, which is uh, Rare Broadcasts, that's another live one. You're, you're going to get that with any band, but uh, but that that's a good place to start. Uh, it's called Hocus Pocus by Focus, and again, it's got a nice selection on there. It hasn't got Eruption on, no, but it's got um, Focus 2, Tommy, so it's got part of mm. Eruption, because Tommy was took from Eruption, um, Harem Scarem. 
Uh, it's a good place to start, a good general cross section of their early material. Good place to start and uh, live uh, at the Rainbow, definitely. But then after that, they went to Ship of Memories, I mm. believe. Was, wasn't that sort of reissues from earlier? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they still like play things like Peas March. They still do that live. But I think uh, the band gets in disarray at that point, so the record label will pull out. Well, it was all like old tracks, demos, yeah. Yeah. stuff that's never been released. But it's strong stuff, though. Isn't I think it's yeah. very, very yeah. good. I love that yeah. album. Absolutely love it. Uh, is it Red Sky at Night? Um, there's, there's something, it's, again, it's predominantly instrumental. I'm, I'm not mm. sure, I can't remember if there's any vocal on there, but um, again, it's not typical focus if you're looking at moving waves in Focus 3, because mm. it's bringing in elements of other tracks, which maybe at the time they didn't feel was suitable to be released. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think out of desperation, maybe, they thought, oh, we'll release this. Yeah, you know, because it's tracks people haven't heard, but but like you say, it's a strong album. Strong it's album. A strong album. Yeah. And like I say, then after that, I think around about six seventy six seventy seven is it. There's an album called Mother Focus. Mother Focus. Yeah. Which yeah. is really strange album. Yeah. It's like almost like a jazz funk album, isn't it? It's completely unlike. Yeah. Um, anything they've done before. I think at that time, Jan Ackerman had fallen out with them so much that yeah. he was dialing, they had to go in the studios at separate times, I think that, that yeah. was a good, yeah. I, I, the Focus fans hate it, because I'm a Jazz Fusion fan, I actually quite like it, it's, yeah. it's yeah. a funky, it's a bit of a middle of the road, yeah. Fusak album, yeah. and then we've also got the um, Focus Con Proby album, yeah. which was made with the uh, 1960s singer PJ Proby, who had had a number of hit records in the 60s. It's a bit like a Tom Jones character. Yeah. I know about PJ Pro because he was friends with my wife's dad. You know, my, you know, they come up at the same time. Okay. But, the, but this sees the transition over to Philip Catherine, who's a fantastic guitarist, jazz fusion guitarist from the early 70s. Um, and he's on there to a completely different sound. And, and then I think they, after that, they sort of trickle out and then they've, <coughs> they've reformed. They sort of disappeared yeah. for a while, didn't they? You know, it was um, almost to the point, I think people thought that they'd call it a day. Yeah. And then uh, they said it came back uh, with a vengeance, you know, and you've got albums like Focus 8, which I've got here, Focus 8. Can you see that one? Uh, see, I don't know these albums at all, so what? how would you describe these? Again, I think it's coming back <coughs> to what I would call the sort of typical focus sound, you know, almost like they'd found themselves. Uh, I mean, Bobby Jacobs was the bass player. Um, yeah, it was more of a return, I think, to the classic focus sound. Um, you'd still got toys holding it all together. Mm. Uh, he's been the mainstay throughout. Yeah. I don't think you could have focus with him. No, it's his, it's his I think, band, yeah. you know, if everybody passed away, I, I really don't think focus would continue no. because he is focus, isn't he, really? Yeah, you know, without a doubt. You know, he's very much the, 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 the focus of the band. Yeah. And he, really. I like that, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell us a little bit about when they played the festival and did you speak? You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it was interesting because uh, HRH Prog in North Wales, yeah. uh, they were playing there, and me and my mate were sitting having something to eat, and Ty's actually come over and asked if he could sit with us mm. uh, because he was waiting to play. <laughs> it was quite comical. Uh, the woman come over with two plates of food, and uh, I said, "Oh, I think you've got the wrong." table love you know because there was three of us there we'd already eaten and he goes oh no they're both mine <laughs> <laughs> i thought fair enough <laughs> and then proceeded to devour a steak and a chili i believe but uh, we had a nice chat with him and uh, he's just a really amenable guy what i like about him is when they do a festival while other bands are playing he'll come and sit on the front row watching Mm. Or, or, you know what I mean, he'll actually listen to other bands, you know, he's, he's very open-minded in that respect. But um, there's nobody like him. No. There's nobody like him. And I mean, uh, we saw them uh, playing with Hawkwind, believe it or not. Focus and Hawkwind at the Wolfram Hall in Wolverhampton. And he was actually playing the flute and the organ at the same time, you know. 
Absolutely incredible. incredible. A bit like Pete Jones, you know, who plays the sax and the keyboard at the same time. Two incredible musicians. But uh, no, he, he's just a tour de force, isn't he, really? You know. in, in, an incredible band. So I think, in conclusion, if you um, want to get into focus, the best albums are those three, yeah. which will be Moving Ways. Focus, Focus three, 3 and, and Hamburger Concerto, Concerto, definitely. And I think in, in this case, me and Steve are in agreement that the greatest album by Focus is their second album, Moving Waves, Moving Waves without a doubt. Classic. So I've got the latest album as well. I think it's that? Focus 11. And there's a track on there called um, All Hens on Deck. And that, uh, that's, the, that's my favourite track off the album. Yeah. And they do perform that live. Yeah. It, it's interesting that when they do live gigs... They don't tend to touch on much stuff after Hamburger Concerto, unless they're looking at the, yeah, the latest this album. album yeah. Is it like this this void, you know, from Hamburger? It's Concerto. a huge void, isn't it? And I yeah. don't know anything about. That's yeah. why I got you in because yeah. I I know those three albums and I like the first album. Yeah, I know that. That's what I know about Focus. Yeah. I can talk about that. But then there's this massive void, and I don't know the new stuff. Yeah. And I looked at the new albums, and there's loads of them. Yeah. And it looks like they're absolutely great. Yeah. So if you like Focus, you need yeah. to check out these. Yeah. And I'm sure, I know how knowledgeable you lot are and watch this, so I'm sure in the comments you're going to tell us all about which of the great <laughs> new albums. And that's what it's all about. So, you know, you don't just come in to see me or even Steve talking, go and see what my mind like. No, yeah. they don't half know some stuff, I'll tell yeah, you. I can imagine. I can you know, imagine. they're going to be writing But it's interesting, this. like I said earlier, on that uh, Focus 50, the live gig in South America, they actually play Pease March off Ship of Memories. Mm. So they are touching on the more obscure yeah. albums live, which I think that's that's a, a move in the right direction. Yeah. Because I think to focus... Oh, you've done it again, again, we've had it once. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> to focus on those three albums, which are all classics, although it's good, I think you need to move away from that sometimes mm. yeah. and bring in you know the more obscure stuff. And, and they are starting to do that now. Yeah. Um, but for a good while, they seem to have been, you know, totally ensconced in that part, that phase of the band. And, it's, and with the odd new track, like mm. All Hands on Deck off mm. the new album. Yeah. It, it, it's, there's like that period, yeah. you know, from Mother Focus up to like Focus 8, 10, 11 and so on, you know, where they're a bit ambiguous, I think. Well, to be fair to them, because I've played in prog bands, if you've got a band like Focus, they're not gigging all the time. Rehearsal time is limited. So you join Focus. If you join Focus, you'll be able to probably play everything off those three or oh, four albums. Yeah. So and that's rehearsed up, you know. It was when I joined IQ, obviously IQ know every IQ track because they've been playing it for forty years. Yeah, yeah. And so they they turn around to me and go, Oh Andy, we were thinking of dropping in Last Human Gateway. So could you <laughs> could you you know, are you alright for that one? And I go, Yeah, yeah, which one's that one? They go, it, 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 it's off so it's only twenty minutes long and I'm like, Oh my god, you know so so it, he hasn't got the original band. They, so they they obviously know all that stuff yeah. and they can churn out eruption at a drop of a hat. So but going into that vast catalogue is probably why it's difficult. To get in the well, you got uh, obviously Tiz Van Leer, you got Udo Panakeet on bass, uh, Menno Huches on guitar, and Pierre van der Linden. He's back, isn't he? What a brilliant drummer. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, and I miss him when I talk about prog drummers, but this guy is such a phenomenal prog drummer. Yeah. And and when you read the history, you see that, you know, uh, is it, the, I always say, I always say, Tiz. 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 Tiz Van Leer. Yeah, you know, you know so. Uh, I, Steve's correct to me on the pronunciation because you guys are always tell me <laughs> Tease Van Leer I think he really I, mean, I think he sacked the first band to get the, he's gone through a few yeah. I mean I think the current lineup's quite stable yeah and it, and it's been around for a few years now you know and it's it's really gelled but I think Peter Van Linden but is I a think, key he's a key member as well but I know. think coming back to this sort of interim period between Mother Focus and when they sort mm. of made a comeback. Yeah. I think the band, other than Tees Van Leer, was a bit amorphous. You yeah. know, they were, it was going through a lot of changes, you know, and he brought in different bass players, drummers and so mm. on. It's only now with the current lineup that I feel that they've achieved some kind of stability. Yeah. You know. And it's and it's brilliant these bands are still going, you know, most of the you know you could go and see these bands, so go and check out Focus Live. It sounds like they're still the peak of their powers. Absolutely, absolutely. Peak of their powers. And, and somebody was saying when they played our festival that, uh, you know, obviously they, they don't work off a set list. Mm. And uh, they were just, they were watching uh, Menno and Udo and they were literally playing off one another. 
with with like a nod, that type of thing, you know. And the musicianship is on another level. Yeah, they're incredible. <clears throat> it really is on another level. Uh, if you haven't seen them live, they do play the UK quite often. I actually asked his what his favourite country is to play in, and he actually said the UK. And they do play the UK quite regularly. You know, they do. Well, the, I think the, what it is is that. That Hocus Pocus was a huge hit here, oh, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so wasn't it, uh, didn't they play it on the World Cup? Yeah. Back in 2014, It's, it's bizarre, it's yeah. bizarre, yeah. you know. It's like, it's, it's one of those many prog tracks that has got into mainstream culture. And when they get in, they get in. You yeah. know, it's, if only we had a media that wasn't so against the genre and was, yeah. was willing to treat it like any other music <coughs> form, I think, you know, we'd be in a different situation. But we're here championing this wonderful genre that we love yeah. and um, me and Steve are now going to shoot another video that's going to be coming out in a few days where we talk about the modern progressive rock scene and what's good and what's not so good he's far more knowledgeable and far more open-minded <laughs> than me I'm a grumpy old git who better looking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so check that in a couple of days um, thanks for watching thanks Steve for coming and doing this for no us problem. we'll have you back soon check out all his stuff go and subscribe to his YouTube and do all that check out his radio show Come to the festival, and, you know, go and do it all. Just get involved. Yeah, Put yeah, any yeah. comments do it, down do there. Do it, do it now. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if um, you want more of this stuff and want to go deeper and darker and more secretive, then come and join my Patreon. <laughs> the link's there as well. You know, so um, that's it. I think we're done. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to move yeah, on now. Yeah. We're done. I will finish with this one thing that I find it, we're talking about uh, the European prog scene, that I find it quite ironic the, the birthplace of prog has always been seen to be the UK and yet it's the one place where it's almost you know frowned upon and yet you know you can understand bands like Arena, Pendragon, Threshold going over to mm. Europe because you guys just totally and utterly appreciate what prog's all about and I just find it really sad but ironic that bands of that ilk have to go abroad to the, get recognition. This, this is a brilliant conversation. We're going to carry this on on the next video. So there's going to yeah. be another video with Steve. It's Steve Gold Week. <laughs> it's the Prom Meister Week. We have three videos. It's going to be on every single one. You know, I've been what, dying. Is this guy is so knowledgeable and he's got all the records. How many records do you oh, have? Oh, ye gods. Well, I've got uh, a lot of it's digital now. Yeah. So I think I've got something like two terabytes of music. <laughs> yeah, I know, mean, it's, it's just phenomenal. It's in the tens of thousands of yeah. albums. This this guy knows, yeah. you know. So yeah. um, I'm gonna. We're gonna go now. See you soon, and see you on the next video. Bye bye. Take care.